Well, hey, Cam, welcome. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Michael, and this is Lynn, and we're just so glad that you're with us today. That's right. We are so excited. We are CAM, the College Age Ministry of Black Hawk Church. And our heart, our desire is to help you get connected to people who you can do life with and ultimately that you would get connected to Jesus. So we hope that this worship experience will help you as you take your next step in that direction. Hi, my name is Taylor and this is a bit of my story. I grew up with a lot of brokenness in my household. Um, there was a lot of um, domestic violence, um, abuse. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of these things made me feel like I was out of control. Um, and the only way I could get control was to focus on the things that um, gave me hope. So the things I put my hope in were um, how physically healthy I was. Um, I was not one to get sick or injured very often. And I was involved in sports and dance, and I was the smart one in the family. Um, and so these were the things I put pride in and put my hope in. The hope I had began to fade a lot in high school when I got three concussions in three years. And um, I wondered if I had a, a future I began to doubt my purpose in life. I began to doubt why I was even here on this earth. Um, I especially began to doubt that there was even a God. And so I came into college uh, as an atheist. Um, I was sure that there was no God. However, um, when I came into college, I had three Christian roommates and a few of the people I met in my classes were Christians as well. And through their influence and um, through their answers to all my questions I had, um, at the end of my freshman year, I became a Christian as well. So I struggled with a lot of doubt and a lot of fear and still that feeling of not being in control um, from my childhood. And then God used um, five more concussions during college, as well as um, Lyme's disease, um, chronic illness, other types of physical suffering. He used, um, really unfortunate circumstances to bring me from a place of doubt to deep faith and um, surrender. I surrendered my control to him because I didn't know what my future was going to look like. And I know in scripture, he talks about giving us a hope and a future. I think the only thing I had to rely on in my suffering and my darkness was him. There, was, um, there were times I sat in my room alone in the dark my head hurt so bad I couldn't even pray. And so I just sat there and audibly said out loud, God, I need you to do something. I just need you. I can't focus or pray or do anything with purpose right now. Like something he really taught me was how much he comforts me and loves me. Um, I had never experienced that type of love or comfort growing up. Um, I'd never really experienced grace um, until I suffered and I felt his arms around me. During this time, I felt um, that his grace was enough for me and that um, I just needed to rest in that. And I also felt like he's definitely given me the complete opposite of what I had in my childhood. And um, again, he's given me, replaced my doubt uh, with faith. Well, hello there, Cam. Man, it's so good to be here with all of y'all today. My name is Coley A. McNair. I'm one of the pastors here at Black Hawk Church. I am the pastor of uh, worship arts and multicultural ministry. Well, hey, I've been asked to talk about Lamet today. Anybody ever heard of that word before? When I think about Lamet, I think about the book of Lamentation. So I don't know if we could do a little talk on Lamet without bringing in a scripture on Lamentation. I'll do that a little bit later. For now, I just want to ask you, have you ever uh, felt like you've needed to Lamet before? What does that word even mean? Well, if we go to a popular source, the dictionary, right? And I got my phone here, it's an iPhone. Some of y'all might prefer an Android. Do they still fight over that iPhone, Android? Anyway, uh, lament is, it means to grieve. It means to have sorrow or to mourn with someone, right? Or to mourn about something. Even when we look at the 
definition, there's a, a, a formal uh, expression for limit, right? In situations uh, where there's maybe dirge or um, elegy, right? So, you know, what does it mean to limit when I come into the, to the house of the Lord? I mean, is it okay to limit in church? Is it okay to limit uh, at home or in my secret place or, you know, with friends? Uh, you know, what, what does that mean? Why, why is lament even important? Well, I want to ask you a question. I got a few questions. Have you ever mourned over anything or anyone? You know, uh, can you think of a situation or, I mean, there's so much happening in our world today. I mean, even just growing up in, in home, I don't know about you, but I grew up with, with three brothers and man, it was a lot of reasons to get upset and mourn over stuff. He took my toy, he, he, he did this, he hit me, what? And you know, or they, I got in trouble, they didn't get in trouble, right? Have you ever mourned? Have you, have you ever seen injustices? Or have you ever, uh, you know, been hurt uh, by a situation? Um, well, there are scriptures that I believe help us to understand lamentation a little bit more of what it means to mourn. Here's a scripture in Romans 12, 14. And it simply says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Now, before I go on, I, I just want to say something about that. This is an example of lament being a natural part of what we go through in life, right? So if you've ever uh, wondered about just right now, I ask you the question, have you ever lamented over anything? Look, lamentation, crying, moaning, it's a natural part of life. Because guess what? Somebody's going to offend you. Somebody's going to persecute you. Somebody's going to do you wrong, whether it's on purpose or not. And the scripture clearly tells us how to respond to that. It says, bless them. It says, rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. And we don't see a lot of that happening today, do we? But this is what the scripture challenges us to do. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Yeah, good luck with that, right? Well... Learning to lament isn't something that we have to practice or, you know, struggle to do in the natural sense of life because something is going to always happen. But I tell you what, learning how to lament in terms of letting go and doing what the scripture challenges us to do here, blessing those, rejoicing with those, even mourning with those who maybe we have an opinion about, but we really don't know them or we're insensitive about somebody's situation, that's not always to do. In fact, I would say sometimes lamentation or being able to lament with someone is downright unnatural. It's just uncomfortable because you don't want all that. What is all this emotion or what is, you know, how do I speak to this? How do I make somebody feel better? How do I feel better myself? Well, let's keep going. Um, not only is it difficult to, to do what the scripture asks us here, sometimes lamentation is hard, or should I say most of the time, lamentation is hard if somebody's done wrong to you. What about in cases where somebody has intentionally done you wrong? Well, let's take a look at what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 7. Even if I cause you star sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you become sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. Yeah, I'm sure you can relate to that, right? So in cases where people intentionally harm you, the scripture lets us know that Lamentation or sorrow, godly sorrow, can lead us to a place of repentance. And sometimes that, that what, what produces that lament or triggers that lament is hearing something that we, we don't want to hear. 
Like sometimes the word of God, it, it's a natural offender. It's a two-edged sword. It will cut you in places that sometimes you don't like it. Or you got a friend who will tell you the truth. Or maybe you're in a position where you need to speak up about something and it's not comfortable. Right? And But Paul is making it clear here, that's a good thing if it leads us to a place where we are in the will of God, we're doing something that's right. Let's move on to something else. So uh, what is something else about limitation? Limitation can lead to division, right? So even though we talked about, yeah, we should, per we should bless people, we should uh, you know, trust God uh, to allow us to move to a place of repentance, what is the reality? Scripture at the end here says, in the world, uh, uh, sorrow brings regret. Right. And there's a lot of regret because a lot of times lamentation when we're hurt, when we're hurt in mourning over something that's that's happened, a wrong done to us, a wrong that we see seen in the world. It can lead to a lot of divisions. But Paul also talks about those divisions in Ephesians 2 and 14. He talks about hostility and divisions and how Christ came to rid us of the divisions, to tear down that wall of hostility, right? So you can check that out on your own time and read that. Here's the last thing I want to say about limitation. We already mentioned the fact that limitation leads to repentance, but how? How does it lead there? Well, here's that scripture in limitation that I wanted to share with you because what good is a talk on limitation without a scripture out of limitations? So Lamentations 3, verse 22 says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, I say to myself. The Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young while he is strong. So there you go. This scripture helps us because it reminds us that God is faithful, that he's great. And when you really think about that, for me personally, it brings me to a place of lament. If I'm holding on to bitterness, if I'm holding on to unforgiveness, if I'm you know, holding on to, to anger, uh, somebody's done me wrong, I remember what God has done for me and how faithful and how great he is to me. And that brings me to a place of worship. Last thing I want to say here for those of you who wonder, well, man, how do we lamb it together? What about this idea of coming together and lamenting together? Well, here's what I have to say to that. I wrote down a little thought because I was thinking about that because when you think about all these divisions, when you think about the words and the different things that cause us, particularly in church, to be scattered and divided and so hostile towards one another, this idea of coming together to worship can be a challenging thought, trying to figure out how the process. Well, here's what I want to leave you with. Don't worry about the physical aspect of worship and praise. Lament and repentance will create a mood and set an atmosphere that when facilitated through spirit and in truth worship, through singing and prayer, will open the windows for God to pour out his Holy Spirit upon us and fill our hearts with joy and praise. So the key thing I want you to get out of that is if we're willing to come together, if we're willing to be unified, if we're willing to be humble, if we're willing to be vulnerable with one another, to be truthful with one another, honest, earnest, and we come together, no judgment, but trusting God, putting it all out there, putting it all on the altar, having compassion for one another, I believe the Holy Spirit will move on our behalf. God will move towards us. And next thing you know, we'll create an atmosphere of worship and praise and even lamentation. Because remember, a broken spirit, contrite heart, oh God, he will not despise. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you all today. I hope you got something out of this. We'll talk to you next time. Fear shakes at the name of Jesus. 
Shame bows to the name of Jesus. There's hope within the promise. Our trust is the name of Jesus. Cause you are great, you are kind. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Cam. It was great to be with you today. That's right. And hey, if you're not already connected with us, we would love to hear from you and we would love to connect. So please be sure to visit our website. All right. Have a great day and we'll see you next week.